Hey guys, uh, welcome to the part 3 of the GVC DD9 restoration. So that's where I get through the old boards and to the output circuit. So I will show you what's happening. So there's the output amplifier. It's 400 gears. We have about 200 millivolts. 4000 gears, 250. Okay, 10 kilo gears, we have 424, still fine. 12 kilo gears, 550, 15 kilo gears, that's where things get weird. 936, 18 kilo gears, 920, and 20 kilo gears. So, you see this jump in the amplitude around 15 kilo gears. That's what I don't understand. That should not be happening. And it's in the last stage of the amplification before we send signal to the record head. And uh, really, you see it's, it's a bias gets through the filter back to the amplifier. But it's 12 and 15, you see, a jump, so and then a little higher. So we're getting, I believe, too much signal. Let me see what you will get on the bias mix. Uh, it should be after C152. Okay. One, just a second, I'm trying to find it on the board. Okay, that's 250. Okay, I should go also 150 and then coil. Okay, 250. Resistor. We still have signal here. It's after capacitor. Okay. And then we should go to 152 and coil. And I don't, don't observe it. See here resistor. Or, ah, yeah, it should be opposite direction. Okay, I need a little bit more time to understand, like, uh, what's wrong. But at least now, I'm almost sure that uh, this jump in the amplitude on the high frequencies leads to the over-biasing, and that's where, like, uh, we don't wake up properly, seriously. Well, guys, I'm afraid this would be it. So I did investigation. I seen like how this deck measures frequencies. It flattened up between 50 gears and 12.5 kilogears pretty well. But everything above 15 kilogears, it just don't record. Uh, I check its schematics, so I'm going to show you how it works. So here is our output amplifier, which then mixes, uh, take something. So here is the output amplifier. So it gets audio signal and mixes with bias here and sends to the record head here, right? So nothing special, everything is usual. The only difference is that uh, this circuitry through this coil you see, coil, these capacitors, uh, these resistors here. I uh, believe this is switch for 70 microseconds or 120, which just turns on this additional circuit here. And this signal goes right here, 112. Left channel uh, frequency response correction. 
Uh, this signal goes from the calibrator board, which has a large CPU in. It's 4-bit CPU. So what they did, uh, they are using uh, this uh, uh, 4-bit for left channel and 4-bit for right channel. Uh, and like these four bits uh, um, connect through this forty sixty six switch, different circuitry. So this two, I believe, for one channel, this two for other channel. So different set of resistors and capacitors uh, to introduce adjustment to the audio signal, and this like corrective signal then goes to the output amplifier. Um, I thought maybe this uh, 4066 switch is uh, old and don't work properly. So I replaced all 10 of them on this board and it didn't help. So I tried, I see like I artificially adjusted bias, changed it in manual mode and then tuned calibration, calibration flatten up, no problem at all. So it's not a bias problem and it's not correction problem. Uh, at this moment, I believe that uh, this rather is a head problem, which uh, it cannot record or something else because this head cartridge works properly. So I did disconnect uh, this coil, L103, and immediately I've seen that without correction, we have a slope on the chart, then connected back and was playing with signals, was measuring uh, signal for this uh, 112 pin. And I've seen like it, it works properly, it's adjust levels. So I don't know, it uh, looks like I cannot do anything better with this deck. So it will record on all tape types up to 15 gigahertz only. Uh, a rare case when I'm giving up, but uh, I just have no idea what else I can do. Technically, it output filter it should be working properly and uh, left-right channel should be working. And I've seen, like I show you in the first part of today's video, that uh, this correction circuitry corrects and there are much higher level on the frequencies above 12 kilohertz. But it doesn't help, it still goes like uh, down when I'm recording, so it's, it looks like that. And I guess it's on any tape type. It just drops. So Nakamichi does it only on the slow speed. My 680 cuts off everything after 15 kilohertz only when it's requires on the 2 cm per second. When we are 4 cm, it's records flat. All other decks I've seen records flat. This one is something unusual. I cannot understand what's wrong. Maybe it's one of the circuitry, or maybe CPU just don't give proper command, and it's all the time like connect some circuitry. We just cuts high frequencies. I'm not sure because like um, what's happening when it increases high frequencies here on the output, right? This means that uh, this circuit is just cuts off these high frequencies here. So when amplifier have to work harder and amplify higher to correct for this loss here, which comes from the other board. So maybe this is the root cause. Um, I'm not sure. But guessing like with this circuitry, which one is from them is like actually is this high frequencies. Uh, you see zero point like one fifteen hundred picofarad. Another fifteen hundred picofarad. This two, this one is twelve thousand picofarad. So definitely it's not this one. So these two connected in parallel. I'm not sure. 
uh, here, so this LHC, so we have this circuit here, we have this here, this one would not affect, it's too large, 170 kilo ohm, so we get another 170, it almost should not affect, so it just connects here, so this pins 10 and 8, uh, so this would connect, this 1.5 microfarad will be connected to this switch between 9 and 8 to the output circuit. So maybe this one, C12, okay, how uh, that's 10 and 11, we'll be connecting this to capacitors and this resistor, so maybe this one, C10, C9, both uh, by 12. 1200, I believe, 12,000 picofarads. It will be big. This 1.5, probably, the root cause. I may try to remove this C12 and see how it will perform. Give me a minute. See you soon. Well, guys, I did measure actually which capacitor has been connected so the, i tried first uh the seed 12 it didn't help then i measured voltage on the pins which supplied by cpu on left channel it was applied to uh connect this uh, pin 10 and 11 which connects uh, capacitors 10 and 9 and on cha on right channel it was connecting uh pins uh two and three and again it's capacitors nine and ten so i disconnected them and i w may not say that it became much better so this doesn't affect much all other capacitors here are disconnected because there is a closing voltage applied to the gates uh what else? So this circuitry it still goes to this microchip. So again here the resistor and the gate three four which gets to the ground, okay. It's rather connect or disconnect these pins, capacitors four. Well, that's the last chance. If it would not work, then I'm done. See you. Hey guys, uh, here I'm experimenting with these capacitors C04. I tried disconnect, it gets worse. So now I connect it uh, in a parallel, another capacitor. You see it gets higher. But it still slopes here, so I don't understand it. So I understand this correction, but uh, the way how it works, it still adjusts like at the 10 kilohertz range, and then quickly goes down. So I don't see how I may improve it. Probably I would give up. See you, bye. Hey guys, it's another day and I still continue experiments and I'm still puzzled. So I replaced this capacitor, uh, C146, uh, because it sits on the uh, negative feedback loop. And here are additional connectors, additional connectivity actually, with multiple threads, which are a correct frequency response for different tape types. So I try like to disconnect each of these capacitors. So this didn't help, it gets worse. We had a much more significant slope. So this circuitry worked properly. Uh, yesterday we checked that circuitry which connects through this connection here and corrects uh, our response from the calibration board. 
and uses these switches to connect different RC circuitry. I work properly because I tried changes values for these cups, disconnect them, here these cups. So everything works up to 15 kilogears. I'm not sure where it's cuts off because like um, for me it feels like uh, when we get more than 15 kilogears frequency it gets lower it here so it has to uh, make it bigger on the output as we observed it in the first part of this video and when it gets too high it just stops recording because it uh, modulates bias and that's it we're losing bias you, know, you observe it, it gets high, like it's two, three times higher here than like the rest of the frequencies. I'm puzzled. I'm not sure why this is happening. So there is no any adjustments. Um, and it's definitely, uh, it's a bias filter, so it shouldn't go here. I'm not sure from where it goes. So maybe this C151, I will try to disconnect it and see what will happen. But that's my last guess. I tried everything. So when I was thinking to give up, I had not sleep half of the night, was thinking what else. Did a couple more experiments this morning. This is last hope, C151. Let's see. See you soon. Okay, guys, you may see what's happening. I just disconnected uh, calibrator board on the left channel. And as you may see, it gets a slope here. So whenever I do, the issue is on the audio board here, but I don't understand what the issue is. See, so the red is the right channel and it uh, still has a connected calibration board. And this one, you see, it gets lower immediately. So still thinking, Wow, I, I may say that I'm thinking, not thinking. It's a pretty tough problem for me. See you. Hey guys, uh, I finally assembled deck. And this would be the rare case when I given up. Uh, I tried everything I could. Unfortunately, this deck I don't want to record above 15 kilohertz whenever I do. I make it place really nice and very linear. So adjusted frequency response, everything is fine and nice. So here is a tape pass. And you may see that everything is correct. So to exclude any rumors that I didn't assemble correctly, that's why there is no high frequencies. Um, so as you see, this deck is, is nice, it plays good. Unfortunately, I was not able to understand and discover the root cause of this uh, recording issue. All right, so now let's do a quick test. So type one tape, let's be install type one tape. We already measured it while on flutter. You've seen that it's extremely low. Uh, now, without best system, let me see white noise, that's what we get, minus 20 decibel on this tape. Right. Not very linear, as you may see now, running the best system. bias, middle equalization, sensitivity, and high equalization. I check it up, this system does a great job in the range between like 400 gears and 12 kilogears. But it doesn't affect anything above. I even disconnected the uh, cable which goes to the calibration board and it don't change much anything. And here we recorded with the best system, as you may see, it's normalized and equalized between left and right channel. 
and up to 15 kilohertz it's fine but then slope is like like something is filtering significantly filtering it down like i observed this only on my nakamichi 680 on the slow speed so they specifically do that on the slow speed probably to reduce noise and hiss um all right time with this tape now let me see we need type 2 tape switch into type 2 mode as you see as soon as we switch it calibration clear it now trying to record on type 2 and you may see we have elevated uh, equalization low bias on the high frequencies for this tape because I was calibrating on the different tape which was probably not so good okay. now we are running the best system So it does bias. Medium equalizer, sensitivity, and high equalizer. And now let's check results. And you see everything is definitely flat so the system works perfectly but it works up to 12.5 kilohertz only and you may see that uh, intersection here is on 12.5 kilohertz so system works really well i'm happy how it does uh, what else metal tape let's do i have two different metal tapes so this one is TDKMA and it's standard settings as you remember it was not very similar between left right channel levels of <laughs> see everything is good sounds now calibration I'm not sure why because I was like tuning it was was looking better probably because I closed the bottom cover and top cover it's somehow affected okay let's see oh we have a lot of calibration oh never seen this before so bias can it do bias No, it's kind of device. So let me open it again and fix the difference between left and right channel. So probably that's the reason. See you soon. Hey guys, an issue appeared to be simple. I didn't lock this nut on the heat, adjusting heat of the left head with guides. And as a result, like it was going up and down, up and down, and it's unscrewed a little bit and tape was going a little bit off and we didn't rise fully on the metal tape now i adjust it i put a nail polish a clean one to seal it so now it works good so let me assemble it back and we will continue our test hey guys actually i just did one more experiment i put the tape recorded on dd9 into nakamichi and it's played just perfect all high frequencies are there so it's problem with playback not with recording i probably will dig a little bit deeper <laughs> into this uh, colby c noise reduction so something is pretty weird happening with this colby c system see you in my next part okay guys what i tried i tried to replace this uh, CA CA01 capacitor which sits after playback amplifier it didn't help 
So I see, observe the drop after 15 kilogears right here on the pin seven. So I try it uh, disconnect capacitors here, here, and here, and nothing helps. So I like not sure how this circuitry from the Dolby chip may affect these frequencies. It uh, looks like uh, the first chip, it just gets uh, cut in uh, like that. So let me turn on recording. So you may see yourself. So when I'm going like 12, 15, and then be cut on 18 immediately. That's what we're observing right here. It's here with 15, and then it's, it drops very quickly. I'm not sure. So, as it play back, uh, my test tap is only up, up to 15 kilogears, so after 15 it's uh, nice and linear. And here on the input we have all frequencies, and then it drops. I'm not sure what to do next, thinking. See you. Well, guys, I tried to replace these electrolytic capacitors and it didn't affect in any way, so I'm not sure what is wrong. So just like uh, close the deck, we'll test it and ship it. All right, one more time without calibration. Recording. Okay. Minus 20 decibel, good. Now, calibrating. Done. And recording after calibration. Flat and neat. Good. Next type type. Uh, type 2. Reset. Type 2. Recording. Okay. Good. Now, calibrating. Good. And recording. And what I see is very flat for me, up to 15 kilohertz. Good. Next, uh, let's try different tape types. So Sony Type 4. This is without calibration. You see how quickly it drops after 10 kilohertz because Sony needs less bias. Now calibrating. You see it sinks more on bias for this tape. Okay, see, everything else goes much quicker. 4 bit old CPU don't seem quick. <laughs> Good. Now, let's see what we get. Yeah, it's flattened up in the high area, you see. Looks better. Good, and now let's get uh, low sensitivity, but with very high frequency. A 
affected tape reset calibration and that's what we have so you see highs are higher than the lows on this tape comparing to the sony specifically okay and now calibrate done you see calibration was quicker for bias because it has to adjust less than for sony tape good calibrated and now we should see the flat response and for me it's pretty flat good everything works i'm happy with the results i'm not happy with uh, frequencies above 15 kilohertz from this deck but that's what we have in this age uh check it recording from this deck on my dr2 it plays really nice no complaint at all so see you on the sound demo bye bye